Antonio breaks down the law of attraction so well that it doesn't matter whether you're a child or an adult, whether you're 8 years old or 80 years old. Antonio teaches the law of attraction in a way to where anyone can grasp the concept, can gain understanding, and can begin to use the law of attraction to get what it is that they desire most in life. I guarantee you that you want to take a listen to Antonio's podcast, Secret to Success, Law of Attraction. Welcome all of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Plant Better Mindset phone call will be getting started in one minute. One minute. One minute we will be, you can clap, that's all right. One minute we'll be getting started. Get someone here. We're talking about, anybody know the topic? Anybody know the topic? Controlling your your blessings. blessings. Controlling your blessings. So right then and there, I would already be rubbing up against some of your beliefs. Phone call, share the feed. There it is. That was not recorded over the phone, but that was recorded on the video. All right. So my name is Antonio T. Smith, Jr. I do definitely want to invite you to subscribe to our podcast. Right now, we've posted the links for Apple and Stitcher for you. So if you have an iPhone or Android, you can find it easily, none offensively, on either one of those platforms. We are everywhere, not just on those two platforms. Reconnect. We 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 have we reconnected. All right, there we go. There we go. We good. We reconnected. Do apologize for my cellular provider. I won't name them because they need to sponsor me for messing up my live feed. There it is. So you guys have excused us for the thing being interrupted. Now I want you to go to the Brick by Brick podcast. It's right there. Brick by brick, it is the great. This is something in which you all need to understand. You do have a massive degree in which you can control what happens to your life. This is very important, so let me... Lean back and give it to you as in as gracefully as I possibly can. You actually have control over the blessings you receive. I know, and I don't mean to offend my audience that that is has a religious background. I'm not telling you that there's not a deity of supreme power that does not exist. I don't mean to offend you in your religious beliefs. But even in your deification and your worship of whoever or or whatever you choose to deify, you still have power over your own life to make proper decisions. This is important. You have the power of something called choice. And you get to decide what you choose abbreviation of choice to plant inside the ground. Very important. Super duper uber important that you understand that your life is under your control. Does everybody in here receive this information? Alright. And I get it. I am not trying to offend you not trying to violate your religious beliefs. I am just simply saying that you have the option to choose what you plant into the ground. Why not? Why? Why? Why am I so hell-bent, since we're talking about religious religion, to focus on you having power over your own life? Listen, whatever you choose, whoever you choose to deify has still given power to you to live a good life. Please understand that you don't get to do escapism your entire life. What is escapism? Escapism is not liking your present and constantly wanting to escape to a life that you say you either want or a life that you believe you don't like. 
You must enjoy your life now. Very important. You must enjoy your life now. Now. All right. Now. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Get it? But here, listen, listen, here's why I do that. Here's why it seems like I'm playing around. What I'm doing is I'm using repetition. It is a, it is a speech form of communication that allows things to stick into people's head. I'm using repetition. Repetition. So you can understand. There's some basic concepts of life that you have missed. One of these basic concepts of life that you have missed is you get to enjoy this life now. Everybody write that down. Everybody write that down. Stop waiting to get to heaven to actually have heaven. No, no, you have to stop it. You have to stop waiting for the future to have your future. You have to become your future now. And then you will draw that future unto you in the future. It is very important that you be happy now because you cannot have money and be happy. Until you be happy, you won't acquire the money. We have to talk about it. I'm trying to teach you how to control your blessings. This is very important. Oprah could not be Oprah until Oprah decided to be Oprah before she was the Oprah and she was just Oprah with the funny name. Very important. This is very important. This is very important for you to understand. I want to equip you you cannot be a lawyer when you pass the bar. You have to become that lawyer now. Very important. You can't be a businesswoman, but deciding that you will put your life on hold because you had children. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing. That is a wonderful thing that you have decided that you're going to take care of your children. But guess what? You can take care of them and still live your dreams at the same time. I'm trying to liberate somebody in this place. Right now, your life has value and you have the opportunity and the responsibility to control your blessings. Two farmers, two farmers, two farmers were sitting in a hill watching their farms be farmed. They had no harvest because the drought was present. And inside this drought, one farmer decided, I'm going to till my ground regardless. I'm going to make sure I have this ground tilled and he continued to plant seeds. The other farmer said, I'll wait till the rain comes. Then I'll plant seeds in. Guess what? A few months later, the rain came and only one farmer was blessed and it was the farmer that was willing to work during the drought, yeah. ask yourself, have you worked during your drought? I was just talking to my staff and we were having a very intelligent conversation about the ebb and flow of life. We were talking about how life gives you natural decreases that allows for you to replan your plan. The tides must rise and the tides must fall because in the rising and the falling is what life happens. When it rises, ships can float and all sorts of stuff, harvest can happen. When it decreases, sea animals can come on land and lay eggs. There are natural decreases in your life that you need. Listen to me, everybody, listen to me, listen to me. I cannot stresses enough. Stop dying in the natural decreases of life. Everybody hear me? Hear me well. Your heart does what you call a systolic beat and a diastolic or a diastolic beat depending on how you like to pronounce it. That means it, 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 it contracts and then it releases. And you need both the contraction and the release to stay alive. Stop dying. Stop being, stop, stop being so upset when your life decreases. Some decreases are not the responsibility, excuse me, some decreases are not because you have planted bad seeds. They are because it's a natural decrease. We have to lose in order to win. And the way you control your blessings 
in this particular scenario is you stop dying in your cutback seasons. I hope someone writes this down. Stop having low self-esteem because you lose something. Stop attacking your belief system because you lose something. Stop attacking yourself with negative self-talk because you lose something. Some of you only have the right mate because you lost the wrong one. And some of you only know how to save because you've made bad investments. And some of you only have apartments because you had to have a roommate you couldn't stay. It is important to receive that there are natural decreases of life. If you want to control your blessings, you are supposed to plant seeds in the decrease. Everybody hear me? Stop planting seeds when you feel like it. Plant seeds at all times. And if it's winter time and you're in cutback season, pour into yourself to get ready to plant seeds in the future. Which brings me to a second point. What was the first point? The first point was respect the natural decreases of your life. Don't die in them. Respect them. Does that make sense? Yes, you have a question. When, you do, you, when do you know it's a natural decrease? Alright, so if you have not planted bad seeds, if the decrease in your life is something that is over or in the natural laws of this universe, you're in a natural decrease. Okay. Here's a natural decrease. It says to you, grandmother died. That's a natural decrease. I'm not telling you not to cry. I'm just simply saying that it is a universal, laws of, universal law of physics. Second law of thermodynamics. Everything starts well, but then unravels or starts in order and unravels into disorder. The second law of thermodynamics is where we get our sense of time. I put that in air quotes because time actually works differently, but we don't have enough time to have a quantum physics conversation about time. However, this is where you get your sense of time from. And life will happen to where you start to lose things. But if you let your perception telling you I keep losing instead of this is a point in life where I can learn how to gain more, you will keep losing. Does this make sense? When you're losing, this is a great opportunity for you to pick up a book that can grow rich and start learning how to be rich. Does that make sense? If your marriage is on the rock, this is a great opportunity for you to start listening to speeches, talks, or books about how to have your marriage not on rocks. Does that make sense? You shouldn't try to fix your marriage by ending it. No different than you should try to fix your life by ending it. Does this make sense? All right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you. Because help is this. This is important. This is this is something in which we must understand, in which we must come to a level of great understanding. Now, if that's going to stop you from paying attention, you come back here. Right? Here's what you need to understand: Don't die in your natural cutbacks of life. Make sense? Numero dos, number two. Don't be Eric, it is at this moment of this phone call that if you would like to check out because you don't want any more truth, this is it. If you don't want truth, if you don't want to be convicted, if you don't want transformation, go ahead and leave. Does this make sense? If you want the benefit of a transformed life, but not the process of a transformed life, you need to go. But if you're willing to be Someone who goes to the work, goes to the process of being transformed, let's talk. People who are in lack are the most arrogant people you know. I know. Because guess what? Everybody here went, I'm in lack. I'm not arrogant. Yes, you are. 
Arrogance is not what you think it is. Arrogance is not about you mistreating people, but you thinking you all that. Arrogance is you thinking you all that in the area in which you lack it. It's called not receiving new information. So let's break this down. Let's try to help you out. Okay? Again, share this. Download this. However you got to do it. Check this out. If you're broke, you are lacking new information in your broke area. Everybody, this is this is this is a science. If you if you don't have okay, if you, everybody go to your backyard right now. Do you if do, is, how many people you have onions in your backyard growing freely? Probably none of you. Guess what? It's not that you don't have the talent to have onions growing in your backyard. You have the lack of seeds in your backyard that are onions. Now, if you're going to respect that about the ground, why are you not respecting that about your ground in your life? Some of you don't have breakthrough because you haven't planted it. Some of you don't have riches because you haven't planted it. I, more people, the most people that I coach, the greater number of people that I coach, when I ask them why are you not rich, they literally tell me, I never thought about this. Now, how many of you did that apply to? Because it's it, right, it's like hands up all over the room. So if you haven't thought about it, you haven't planted it. And if you haven't planted it, you cannot receive it. Let's do that again. If you haven't thought about it, you haven't planted it. And if you haven't planted it, you cannot receive it. How many of you are suffering right now because you haven't thought of your breakthrough? This is important. Some of you are breakthrough less. Because you don't think of your breakthrough, you think of your breakdown. And that's not how you control your blessings. Because your job is to guard yourself of energy leaks. That means if you're only thinking of your breakdown, you're leaking energy for your breakthrough. It's a very important concept to understand. Pete, yes, got a question over here. Okay. You can't receive the harvest. If you haven't thought about it, you haven't planted it. If you haven't planted it, you can't receive the harvest. How many of you have cucumbers in your backyard? It's not, listen, it's fine. I don't like cucumbers. That's fine. Pick something you like. Pick a vegetable or fruit that you like. If it's not in your backyard, it's not that you don't have the talent to do it. That is, you don't have the backyard to do it. I don't have a backyard. Yeah, Amy got one. I don't, wait, check it. Your aunt has one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to, yeah, she said I said it right the first time. We have to remember that we're international. We're in Texas. You know, we have a southern draw. We have aunties down here, okay? Y'all have aunts. Oh, excuse me. You all have aunts. Y'all have aunts. We have aunties. Okay, there we go. We're in Texas. The point is, it's not that you have you lack the brains. To plant a cucumber, it's just that you haven't done it. Now flip it. What else have you not done in your life to get the life that is worthy of you? In order to control your blessings, you have to do what is a blessing for the quality of your life. It's not going to change. It's not. It's. Let's, let's, let's push a little bit. Let's push against the grain a little bit. I, I, I hope all of you stay on. I, I know like football's on and stuff, and I, I get it. But I'm, I'm, I'm just going to push this information to you. Some of you are only struggling because you're not controlling your blessings. So, oh, I need you to write this down. Listen to me. You've relegated your struggle to you being outside the will of your God. You have relegated your struggle to you being a bad person. For this not being your season. That's not true. You're struggling because you haven't planted the opposite of struggle. Some of you are working at jobs that force you to struggle. And you haven't planted the opposite of not working at this job being forced to struggle. How do you do that? Great that you asked the question. If you save 10% of your income of every single thing that that job pays you, you can literally save your, excuse me, invest your way out of that job. 
You can literally have that job pay you not to be at it anymore. But if you spend everything you have, does that make sense? Then you're planting everything you don't want. If you spend everything you have, you're planting everything you don't want. So that's that's this that's that's a segment of this conversation. Does everybody get it? Now, lean in. It is at this point of the conversation. If you do not want the tools to save or rescue or or greatly multiply the quality of your life, check out. Hey, this is I'm not I'm not coach for you. This isn't a call for you. Check out whether you're on the phone or not. But if you want it, let's give you the tools. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So number one was stop what? Respect the natural decreases of your life. If you ebb and flow, you're right. If you want to control your blessing, start respecting the natural decreases of your life. Don't die in the natural decreases. Just respect them and be grateful that you get to live in a decrease. It is a blessing to live in a decrease. Because guess what? A hurricane coming through your coastal land is an increase of weather. You were doing well in the decrease of it. Respect the decrease. What was number two? Don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant. Arrogant. People who lack. If you're lacking in the area, you're arrogant in that area because you're not receiving new information. Let's give you the tools. The only information you are receiving if you are lacking is bad information. Hey. The only information you are receiving if you're lacking is bad information. Okay? Does this make sense? Now, what do I mean by bad information? The truth is, there's no such thing as good or bad. That's that one. There's no such there's no such thing as you getting bad information. There's a perception that says your information is bad. Here's when something becomes bad. When that information does not serve your desire. So if you want to be rich and you're only receiving the information that allows you to be poor, that's now bad information. Does that make sense? Listen, I, I, I can't. Why are you playing video games all day and you're not getting paid for it? Yeah. Why are you arguing with your spouse, mate, significant other if you're not being paid for it? If you want to get paid to argue, go be a politician. Why you got jokes and you're not being paid for it? Why are you living a life doing stuff you hate? You cannot control your blessings living a life that you hate. Let me explain why. If you hate your life, it means you hated your day. And if you hate your day, it means you hated the tasks, most of the tasks that were in it. Let's break this down. Everybody write this down. If you hate your life, you hated most of your day. If you hated most of your day, you hated, you hated most of the people and circumstances within it. Okay? If you hated your life, you hated your day. If you hated your day, you hated most of the people and circumstances that are in it. Watch it. If you hated your week, I mean your day, then you hated your week. Same thing. Same stuff in there. And if you hated your week, you hated your month. And if you hated your month, you hated your year. And if you hated your year, you hated your decade, and you're 67 years old right now saying, I wish I would have did better. You in your 30s saying, I wish I would have went to college. You in your 40s say, I'm going to leave this man and go find me my life. Grateful, I'm grateful that you decided to change. But don't live a life arguing with people. To control your blessings, that was number two, right? Number three. They're not going to like this one, y'all. 
Pick your mate. Well. Pick your mate well. Yeah, okay, got a question. I, I, I asked a lot of them. It's pretty far back there. Okay, so you taught us that picking your Okay. Alright, you don't even have to finish the question. Okay. Finish, I mean, pick your mate well. Write that down. You only date to the level of your self-esteem. Write that down. Which we will address both. Thank you for your question because I wouldn't address it the second. I would not have addressed the level of self-esteem. Alright, here we go. You want to control your blessings? You have to control how you pick your mate. I get it. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm not supposed to tell you that. Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You Have you ever been with somebody that, that argues with you every time you do well? well? What happens? The moment you do well, they argue with you. What happens? You lose the motivation to keep doing well. You're now being rewarded for doing poorly. And that's the life you lead. Oh, I'm, I'm coming to that number two. Yes, self-esteem. Okay? In order to control your blessings, you need to also control the people you hold in your garden. Okay? If this is about sowing and reaping, planting and getting, then the people you connect yourself with, they now have access to your wonderful garden. And if you keep connecting with me and I keep planting my poison in your garden, and you wonder why you keep getting bad things. I'm the problem. Let's break that down in real talk, real 21st century language. How many of you out there right now keep saying things like, man, I'm doing the best I can. I don't know why this keeps happening to me. You know what? Maybe you're not the problem. Maybe the people you are attached to are the problem. Have you been there? Have you found yourself in a place in which... Your life should be going very well, but it's not. It's not going well because the people in your life are not well. There's sick people planting sick things in your garden, and now you're sick. You work out every morning and can't lose weight. Watch the people in your life. I'm serious. The people in your life are just as toxic as the food you put in your body. If you work out every single morning and you are not losing weight, consider the people in your life. I'm serious. I'm, not, I'm dead serious. You've got to be able to, you have to be able to responsibly deduce that the people in your life are causing you problems if they're not blessings. You have to, you have, you have to respect it. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Let's move on. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you warnings every step of the way I go. Every step of the way I go, I'm giving you warnings. At this point, if you do not, like somebody said, please, please move on. <laughs> if you do not want, you know what? I'm not even going to warn you. What, what's my next number? Is it four? Oh, I forgot to talk about the self-esteem. You date to the level of your self-esteem. That's inside whatever number I was just on. The people you are currently kissing on, the people you're currently hugging and loving, you have convinced yourself you deserve them. Now, if they're a blessing to you, good job. You deserve great financial increase, spiritual increase, mental and emotional increase, and mental increase. Good job for you. However, if you're not growing, if the only reason you're with someone is because they're a great babysitter, oh. life's far too short for that. If you're staying with someone because you have to work some certain hours and they watch the kids, life's too short for that. Careful how you date. So listen, here's something I want to say. I'm going to hit it and I'm going to move on. Right? Because I, don't want to, I want you to throw stones at me today. If you do not have what you want and you do not like your life, I strongly suggest to you right now, stay single until you get it together. 
why. Here's why. I'm talking pure science. Pure science. If you don't like your life, if you don't like where you're going, if you can't stand your job, if you can't stand your home, if you can't stand all of it or all this, whatever it is, if you literally have lack and unappreciation everywhere, if you literally don't like your harvest, that means everybody you know in your life are just like you. And you can't keep growing, connecting yourself to people who are not growing. If you don't like your life, this is probably the best thing I've said on this phone call this far. If you don't like your life, and anything about it, then you are literally, you only know people just like you because like attracts like. Because you only have the awareness or the confidence to talk to people who are just like you. You literally pass up on the good man or the good woman because you think they're out your league. So you only have confidence to talk to people who are in your league. And those people have the same problems as you. Y'all just spend a lot of money on nice clothes to cover it up. Oh. <laughs> right, right. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. You go out drinking yeah. every day. And you put all your money in the toilet. It's, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Stay single until you raise your level of awareness. When you raise your level of awareness, then you'll date someone who's worthy of you. That's all right. I clap. <laughs> I clap. I clap for myself. I know. I clap for myself on that one. I know that one was rough. I know that one was rough. But that was your question. You brought. I wasn't even gonna be a part of the phone call. That was not even gonna be a part of the phone call. She asked it, and y'all got it. That's what it is. All right. That's what y'all. Y'all see y'all fault. Now, the last point of this phone call. Are you? Whoo, Lord, that person. Uh, are you ready? Okay. Everybody, listen. I First, let me just thank you. I, I thank you very much for calling in to the Plant Better phone call and tuning in. Thank you very much. I am going to say something so... Ah, I have no words for it. I just have to go, ah. I want to say something so, ah, that you need to hear and we need to talk about. It's the last point of this phone call. That is it. It's the last point of this phone call. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you, they, they say they're not ready. It's an appropriate response. It's an appropriate response. I invite you to share this feed. I don't know what to tell you, but here we go. Theology is not awareness. <laughs> Theology is not awareness, okay? Theology is not awareness. Wait a minute. Theology is not awareness. It's not awareness. Theology is not awareness. Okay, this is not my fault. I don't mean to disrespect you. I have, I, I have listen, I am a believer, so don't, don't think I'm, I'm an atheist, although that's not even a problem. If, well, I wouldn't have a problem with that if I was or if you are. I'm just simply telling you that to know something about your sacred scriptures does not make you a highly aware creature in this world. Reverend! Theology is not awareness. Listen to me. Just speak. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm not all over the place, but I'm literally just on your neck right now. Theology is not awareness. I'm telling you, just because you know that joy comes in the morning does not mean you understand it. <laughs> just because you know that joy comes in the morning and you can intellectually read that joy comes in the morning does not mean you understand it. Understanding something brings you towards awareness. You need to be marching towards awareness, not marching towards intellect. You can have general knowledge over your sacred scriptures, but if you don't understand them, you're not benefiting from them. All right, watch it. I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. I'll, I'll prove it to you. You reap with yourself. You understand. You. I mean, you get that. But you don't understand it because most of you are doing terrible things in your life. You are disrespecting people. You're being mean. You're being racist. You're being you're being insensitive. You're being apathetic. You're killing your finances. You're spending all your finances. You don't save. You disrespect your parents. 
You teach your children's low self-esteem, and you think that somehow you're not going to reap that harvest that you're sowing. You literally plant all the bad things in your, literally, you literally plant all the bad things, and then you say, he's got grace for me, and I'm not going to receive the harvest from it. Grace will not stop a harvest. Grace will simply let you endure it. Stop, Reverend. <laughs> Grace is not stopping a harvest. I'm serious. Just because you have theology don't mean you have awareness. I don't, uh, who, 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 theology, theology is not just Christian, okay? Theos, Greek word for God. So it can be theology and whatever deity of your choice. And listen to me. Listen to me very well. Just because your deity gives you grace don't mean he's stopping harvest. Or, or she, or whatever, right? I don't, I don't know what you worship. Or, or the tree, or the cell phone, whatever you like. Or randomness. I don't care. Whatever it is, I don't care. I don't care what it is. There's one thing that would never, two things that would never change in this world. Change, it's always going to be here, and causality. Period. You're always going to get the effect of what you've caused. If you cause yourself to jump in the water, you're going to get in the water. You can't, you can't, you know, I'm going to jump in the water today. And on your way down, say, you know what? Nah, I've been a good person. I'm not, I'm not going to get with it. That's not the way it works. <laughs> But that's the way you treat your life and it's grossly irresponsible. Some of you right now are literally planting the worst seeds possible. The worst seeds possible. And you're praying to your deity of choice not to receive the harvest of those seeds. And that is you not willing to be responsible for your blessings. You can't pray stuff away that you planted. You can pray all day. You can grace all day. You can believe all day. At the very most, you're simply going to receive the endurance and the stamina to handle what you planted. Theology is not awareness. Some of you know how to pray, but don't believe a single prayer that you pray. Woo. To pray is not enough. I'm going to have to do a whole phone call on how to pray. Wow. Okay. To pray is not enough. To believe in your prayer. To approach your prayer in a state of belief is what you need to receive it. All right, somebody went, you know what, you you need to stop. You need to stop talking about, <laughs> I didn't see somebody say, why y'all let them do this? <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop talking about, okay, if you're Christian, I ain't trying to be offensive, but your Bible says, come to the throne of grace boldly. boldly. Not come to the throne of grace below self-esteem. You know what, Lord? I want this, but you know, if, you, if it's in your will, I don't feel like, you know, I don't want to offend you, but no! Theology is not awareness. Somebody put that down. Hashtag plan better. I don't care if you throw stones at me all you want to. To know what your sacred scriptures say, but not to understand the abundance of those scriptures. Well, I don't want to say scriptures because everybody knows that scripture. To know what your sacred text says, but not understand the implications of abundance of that text or those texts. That is not awareness. That is intellect. That is head knowledge, not heart knowledge. You, theology is not awareness. I don't listen. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't care. I don't. I care about you. I don't care about your disagreement with me at this point on this point. I'm, I'm, I have tough enough skin for you not to like what I'm saying, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm right. Just because you know something don't mean you'll get it. <clears throat> How many of you know right now that million dollars exist? How many of you had it? Because you know it, but you don't have the awareness to get it. 
Did you know that there are 1,700 millionaires made a day? I'm serious. 1,700 new millionaires are created every single day on planet Earth. And you broke. There is more money in circulation on planet Earth than excuses that you have. Right. But you broke. And 98% of that money is digitally. That is digitized. That means that's energy flowing through you right now that you haven't figured out how to tap into because you understand something. Well, excuse me. Because you know something, but you don't understand. This is making sense to you. Just because you know your deity of choice doesn't mean you have awareness in his power. I'm throwing my hands up. I'm trying to be nice. But I can only be me. Okay? If you want nice, find another coach. Okay? You need to understand what I am saying the words that are coming out of my mouth like Chris Tucker. Because here is the truth. Knowing theology is not awareness. I'll take it out of theology. Knowing how to do math don't mean you understand it. Some of you have treated abundance in life the same way you've treated your schoolwork. You memorize just enough to pass the test but not enough to remember after the test. Right, right. Oh, sorry. Did y'all hear what I just said? That's what I said about you. You, you, you only memorized enough to pass the test. You put it in your short-term memory, but you have no, you have no intellectual or, or aware state of the concepts. You don't understand the concepts of it, because when you understand the concepts of something, you can do it. You guys, right now, seriously, you understand the concept of brushing your teeth. You can literally brush your teeth and be half asleep because you do it 98% of the mornings that you wake up. But remember, there was a time in your life that you couldn't brush your teeth. You, you had to, how do I do this? Left, right, right hand, my left hand is weak, my right hand. This is how you became right hand and left hand. You did all this stuff because you had to memorize what to do. Now that you're grown, you understand the concept. Can I invite you to understand the concepts of controlling your blessings? Let's recap. Give me point number one. Respect the natural decreases. Respect of the life. natural decreases of your life. Okay, she's gonna post the wonderful notes right here so you can hear. Number two. Don't be arrogant. Well, don't be arrogant. Receive new information. Number three. Pick your mate well. You only pick your mate according to the level of your self-esteem. Pick your mate well. You only pick your mate according to the level of your self-esteem. I'm gonna get stoned for that. Theology is not awareness. That was the last point. <laughs> Theology is not awareness. Listen, trust all you want to. <laughs> trust. I just saw a comment on that. <laughs> trust all you want to. But to trust and not have belief with that trust is not trust. It is simply the illusion of shutting up people around you. To trust means to die for that thing. To trust means to put all my, my being in this thing. Some of you are not trusting. You're pretending to trust. And you're going through the motions of trust, but your dominant thoughts are saying, this isn't going to work, and that's the only thing that you're receiving. Let me end this. There was a, there is a master of your life, okay? Let's take this out of, I don't mean this to be theology, okay? I don't mean this to be theology. I don't mean this to be anything of a spiritual sense. The master of your life is the infinite intelligence that you get to tap into, okay? Does that make sense? Keeping it as universal as possible. Whatever you want to call that university, I mean that inter, inter, 
infinite intelligence, by all means, go ahead and do so. I want to end <coughs> with this story. An organist was practicing one day at a great cathedral. And at this great cathedral in Europe, he was playing and a man came up to the organ and asked if he can play. The organist looked at the man and thought to himself, I shouldn't let this man play. Just look at him. He's unshaven. His clothes are soiled. He looks like a down and out man. So he told the man, no. But the unkempt stranger asked again. The stranger said, let me play. Finally, the man who was playing this beautiful music on this organ said, fine, I'll let you play. And he thought to himself, what could he possibly do? The down and out fingers of the down and out man whose clothes were soiled, who was unshaven, began to play the organ in the most beautiful manner possible. And the organist who was originally playing said, oh my God, how can such beautiful music come from not only such an unkept man, but he plays better than anybody I've ever seen in my life. As the down and out man got off the organ, the man who originally played the organ said, Sir, wait just, just, just wait a minute. What is your name? And as the down and out man slowly walked away, he said, My name is Felix Mendesel. He just happened to be the greatest musician of all time in his era. And the organist who originally played said, Wow, I almost did not let master play because I was there. I want to submit to you some of you are not letting the master play. Some of you are not tapping into the source that is greater than you. Regardless of your beliefs and your social structure or status, there is a force greater than you that if you just let it play, in your life, you will have a different harvest. But, since it doesn't always come shaven and with unsoiled clothes, you're too arrogant to move aside and let the force that's smarter than you be greater than you so you can be greater than what you have today. 